Interpower Corporation, the premier supplier for power system components with one week manufacturing lead time and over 4 million parts in stock. Visit www.interpower.com for more information. Today on Engineering Newswire, we're flying unmanned Navy helicopters, adjusting our atomic clocks, reconfiguring robotic ape spines, and attacking any target in the world in less than an hour. NIST recently demonstrated a compact atomic clock design that relies on cold rubidium atoms instead of hot atoms. It's a switch that promises improved precision and stability in ultra-portable clocks. This is NIST physicist Elizabeth Donnelly. Behind her, about one million cold rubidium atoms are held in a small glass vacuum chamber in the lower left of the photo. The atoms are laser-cooled and trapped with magnetic fields at micro-Kelvin temperatures. If you zoom in on the screen, you can see a close-up of the atom-trapping region of the apparatus. The vacuum chamber is about the size of a coffee mug. Oh, yeah. 150 cubic centimeters, set in a small table of lasers and electronics. Right now, it's 10 times larger than NIST's chip-scale atomic clock packages. But when miniaturized, the new design will have the same footprint, but could be a thousand times more precise and stable than chip-scale atomic clocks over crucial time spans of a day or more. By achieving this goal, the cold atom clock could also match the performance of commercial cesium beam atomic clocks, but in a smaller package. According to Donnelly, NIST is trying to push ultra-portable clocks to higher performance levels with the aim of making a clock that doesn't even need calibration. Lockheed Martin Skunk Works has recently revealed its plans for a hypersonic aircraft that will go twice the speed of the SR-71, a U.S. Air Force aircraft that once flew from New York to London in less than two hours, reaching speeds exceeding Mach 3. The SR-72 twin-engine aircraft is expected to travel a Mach 6, that's six times the speed of sound, with the ability to strike targets. At this speed, no enemy would have time to react or hide. According to Brad Leland, Lockheed's hypersonics program manager, hypersonic aircraft coupled with hypersonic missiles could penetrate denied airspace and strike in nearly any location across the continent in less than an hour. That's what I call modern warfare. For the past several years, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works has been working with Aerojet Rocketdyne to develop a method to integrate an off-the-shelf turbine with a supersonic combustion ramjet air-breathing jet engine to power the aircraft from standstill to Mach 6. The SR-72, dubbed the Son of Blackbird, is the result and it could be operational as soon as 2030. The next generation MQ-8C Fire Scout unmanned helicopter conducted its first flight at Naval Base Ventura County in California. Northrop Grumman's unmanned chopper took off and flew for seven minutes in restricted airspace to validate the autonomous control systems. It was such a success that it lifted off a second time for nine minutes, completing a pattern around the airfield and reaching a 500-foot altitude. The MQ-8C Fire Scout is designed to fly twice as long and has three times the payload capacity of the intelligence gathering MQ-8B, currently aboard Navy frigates. The 8C is based on a larger commercial airframe with additional fuel tanks and an upgraded engine, so it should be able to fly about 12 hours and carry 2,600 pounds. The 8B is on its seventh deployment, supporting anti-piracy missions, and it was also used extensively in Afghanistan to provide airborne surveillance to ground commanders. Using onboard sensors to capture full motion video, Fire Scout can identify targets and then distribute the information in real time. This allows ship-based commanders to maintain awareness of specified areas and keep an eye on a target of interest for long periods of time. iStruct, an ape-like robotic creation from the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence and the University of Bremen, has scored itself a reconfigured spinal system. Giving it the ability to bend and twist like never before, what's more impressive is that the new spine system has improved the metal ape's ability to balance and adjust its standing position. The team refers to the ape as a space robot as depicted by the makeshift lunar environment for the promo shots. The ape robot utilizes multi-contact feet to help with balance and spine adjustments as it smoothly transitions from being quadrupedal to bipedal. The team is working to get this ape moving, but come on, he just stood up, one step at a time. Though this ape could be from the same family as the Robo Simeon we covered back in September, and it's hard to tell which is more evolved, it's still creepy to see what these metal apes are capable of. Those dirty apes.
Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm Megan Zilla and this has been your Engineering Newswire.